guys, this is your Tita in China and today we're back with a new skincare video. So this is the same outfit. It's actually recorded all on the same day. I uploaded it all on the same day. But I am chunking the videos out so that it won't be information overload for you guys. So today we're going to talk about the concentrations and how to choose the right retinoid for you. And we're going to talk about the different vehicles and the different concentrations of retinoids available on the market. But as usual, if you're new here, welcome. Happy to have you on board. My name is Emeline and I am your Tita in China. I come up with skincare related videos as well as living in China related videos. So if these are things that are interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you will know the next time I will upload a new video. Let's continue our conversation about retinoids. So like I said in my previous video, and please watch that video first, it's right here before we move on with this video because this video will make more sense once you've watched the first one. So go and watch it if you haven't yet. If you already have, let's move on. Like I've said, retinoids are the gold standard of skincare and they can fix pretty much any problem that you have with your skin, be it acne or signs of aging, dullness, cloud pores, hyperpigmentation, whatever it is that you have in your skin, whatever problem you have on your skin, retinoids probably will be able to help improve it. It really does work and it's one of those skincare ingredients that have the most studies backing it up. And there are more studies underway. We're still really trying to learn more about retinoids and even coming up with newer generation retinoids. Also as a reviewer from the last video, retinoids help with acne because it helps unclog your pores, push all of the gunk out of your pores, and also minimize the amount of the bacteria of the acne causing bacteria on the surface of your skin. So since it targets different components of acne, it really helps solve your acne problem long term. But retinoids are also found to be effective for anti-aging because it builds collagen within your skin. And with collagen holding in water, your skin becomes more plump and hydrated, minimizing the look of fine lines and wrinkles. And the quicker cell turnover and skin rejuvenation will also help with hyperpigmented spots. But but not all retinoids are created equal. When choosing a retinoid that's right for you, you don't just look at the number of steps or conversions it needs to take for it to become the most active ingredient which is retinoic acid. You also don't just look at the generation that it belongs to. Like for example, it's very easy to claim that retinol or retinaldehyde is actually more potent or is more irritating than retinol because it only takes one step or one conversion before you get the active ingredient which is retinoic acid. When in fact, retinol or retinaldehyde actually is milder than retinol even if retinol takes two steps to convert. And this is really why things can get really confusing when it comes to retinoids and we need to take our time in understanding this skincare ingredient so that we will be able to avoid the dreaded retinol burn which really will hinder your progress by at least a couple of weeks. So we don't want that. So we want to be smart about choosing which retinoid to start with. Okay, so these are general considerations. The more conversion your retinoid needs to become the active ingredient, which is retinoic acid, the less irritating it will be. But you need to look for comparable doses. Generally speaking, retinoin is much more irritating than retinol. So 0.1% retinoin is generally more irritating than 1% retinol. But if you're comparing 0.025% retinoin or even 0.01% retinoin to 1% retinol, then you can see that the irritation levels might be the same or retinoin might even be less irritating at this concentration. So you see, it's not as simple as one is more irritating than the other. You also need to look at the concentrations and determine whether or not it actually is as irritating as we think it is. On the other hand, retinal or retinaldehyde only takes one conversion step to retinoic acid while retinol takes two steps. So remember, the general rule is the more steps it takes to become the active ingredient, the milder it is. But in the case of retinol and retinal, retinol is actually much more irritating even if it takes two steps while retinol only takes one. This is because retinol or retinaldehyde targets different types of skin cells at different levels of maturity. And this is the reason why retinol is much milder than retinol. So again, 
again, you see, even if they're the same generation, both of them need to convert. Retinol is milder than retinol, even if it only needs one more step to convert to retinoic acid. And retinol needs two. So if you rank these three retinoids according to most irritating to least irritating, it would be tretinoin, retinol, and the least irritating is retinol. In newer generation retinoids like the xeratine and adapalene, adapalene is the least irritating. That doesn't mean that adapalene will not cause you any irritation, okay? So with all of these talk about concentrations and percentages of retinoids, we get the second general consideration, which is the lower the concentration or the percentage of tretinoin, the milder the product will be. The third general consideration, the nearer it is to an ointment or a cream consistency, the less irritating it's going to be. So tretinoin in a cream form is going to be much more soothing and much less irritating compared to tretinoin in gel or oil form. Because remember, tretinoin is only at like 0.1%, which means that like 99% or more than 99% of the product is not tretinoin. So it can be like a gel form, it can be cream, it can be like an ointment form, it can also be an oil or a serum. So generally, the thicker it is, like a cream or an ointment, the less irritating it's going to be, the more soothing it's going to be, while gels and serums or even like a water, watery texture will be much more irritating. So all in all, it's completely possible that a 0.01 tretinoin in a cream vehicle would be much less irritating than a 1% retinol serum. Especially if you take into consideration the concentration, as well as the vehicle, as well as the active ingredient itself. But let's move on to more skin specific considerations. All FDA approved retinoids, so I'm talking about tretinoin, adapalene, now the xeratine. All of them are good for acne. However, adapalene and tazaratine are less effective as anti-aging than tretinoin. I mean, of course, there is still an anti-aging effect with adapalene and tazaratine, but it's definitely not as much as tretinoin. So if you are interested in retinoids for anti-aging, adapalene and tazaratine is not really something that you should be looking into. You should be focusing more on tretinoin. So now you need to consider what are your general concerns. If your most urgent concern is control controlling your acne, then adapalene might be a good idea because it's not irritating. That means that um, you are able to use it more frequently and you'll be able to get the effects much faster than if you were just using tretinoin because tretinoin really needs more time and it needs a lot of adjustment for your skin. While adapalene does not need that much adjustment and you can actually get the full benefit of adapalene at a much quicker time period. But if anti-aging is your main concern, then you should definitely stick with tretinoin because adapalene and tazaratine does not give that much to you in terms of anti-aging anyway. Oh, there is also one consideration and that is pregnancy. So if you are pregnant or if you're trying to get pregnant or if you're planning to get pregnant in the near future, like in the next few months, then you really should be avoiding all retinoids because it can harm your baby while it is growing in the womb. So before we start talking about supporting ingredients in our retinoid journey, let's first give a rundown of what we have spoken about so far. So tretinoin is the most irritating followed by retinol followed by retinal or retinaldehyde. However, depending on the concentration and depending on the vehicle of the tretinoin, tretinoin can actually be less irritating than retinol. So for example, like I said earlier, 0.01 tretinoin in a cream formula, so it's soothing, it's a low concentration formula, might be less irritating than a 1% retinol in a serum formula. Between retinol and retinal, retinal is actually less irritating because of the way it works and which skin cells it targets. So even if retinol takes only one step converting to retinoic acid and retinol takes two steps, retinol is still less irritating than retinol. Adapalene and tazaratine both are less um, irritating compared to tretinoin and retinol. However, they are not really as effective for anti-aging as they are for acne. So if anti-aging is your main concern as to why you want to add a retinoid into your skincare routine, you definitely should go for tretinoin but if 
if acne is your main concern, then Adapalene or the Zaratine would be good enough for you. So finally, let's talk about supporting ingredients. And I mean supporting ingredients within the formulation itself, not other products that you use on top of using your retinoid. The supporting ingredients are usually found in retinols or in cosmeceutical products. But you know, if you are going to choose a retinol route, which is completely fine by the way, then you need to also look at the supporting ingredients to see which retinol actually is best for you. So because retinoids can already cause dryness and flaky, redness, irritation, it is best to avoid those that have exfoliating acids like AHA and BHA. Usually, you will find a BHA or salicylic acid in the formulation. Generally, this is fine, especially if it's a low concentration retinol like 0.3. But if you are a sensitive type or if you have sensitive skin, then it's best to find one or find a formulation that doesn't have salicylic acid. There are also, there are some retinols that are paired with vitamin C and generally again that's fine but if you are a sensitive skin type, it's best to avoid the vitamin C because that actually can cause added irritation on top of the tretinoin or on top of the retinol. So some beneficial combinations, my favorite combinations for example, are retinols with ceramides and pantenol because ceramides do help rebuild your skin, it helps maintain your skin barrier as well as to prevent dryness or trans epidermal water loss. So basically, it traps in all the moisture that your skin already has so that it keeps it hydrated. While panthenol is effective in reducing redness and irritation and it helps your skin heal quickly. Centella Asiatica, as long as you don't use a fragrance product, is also good at healing your skin. While niacinamide is also helpful. However, niacinamide isn't active and there are some people who experience stinging with niacinamide. So if you're one of those types of people who have this kind of reaction with niacinamide, it's best to look for um, a formulation that doesn't have niacinamide. So these are considerations that you need to think about while you are choosing the retinoid that you feel you're going to start with. And next week, I'm going to talk to you about the things that you should be expecting in the first 12 weeks and how you can deal with them. So that's our video for today, guys. I hope that you found this video helpful and I hope that you found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share this to your friends who are also skincare buffs. Or if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, violent reactions, please leave me a comment down below. Thank you for watching guys. See you next time. Bye!